The ability to isolate and then manipulate material is a cornerstone to a blacksmith skill set. Hello, I'm Mark Asprey. In this video, we're going to look at a miner's candlestick, an American piece of mining history. Using a 3 quarter inch by 1 quarter inch bar, mark off 1 inch, 3 inch, 7.5 inches and 9.5 inches from the end. Using the soft edge on the near side edge of the anvil, set down the bar at the 1 inch mark. Draw it out over the bick for efficiency. Take the bar down to around 5 16 of an inch square in cross section. Changing sides of the anvil, set down the bar at the 3 inch mark. Do not correct for the growth and thickness of the bar at this stage. We're going to use that for our corners later. The material that we've isolated will become the hook and the spike of the candlestick later. I need to draw down the bar a little more to hold it in the vise. I don't want all the bar drawn down, so I'm going to finish it over the bick of the anvil to give me a soft transition that can be expanded later. This corner needs to be removed to stop cold shuts from forming later as we lift the hook. I'm going to split the hook from the remainder of the spike material. You can see that I'm starting on the face of the anvil and I'm going to move to the cutting plate to protect both the chisel and the anvil face from damage as I work. Finish the cut about 3 8 of an inch plus from the set transition at the back of the isolated material, about the thickness of the hook material itself. My chisel has both a sharp and a soft edge. I use the sharp edge as a sight while I'm working and the soft edge to finish the cut to prevent cracking later. The root of the cut is not equal, it's rather like the web between your fingers. Finish the cut at the vise with something like a 1 16th handheld fuller. Pull the hook material down. Note the vise jaw insert with the soft edge. To prevent the vise jaws from getting racked, you can see I'm using a vise spacer at the other side of the vise jaws. To aid in drawing out the hook, I'm going to put a convenience bend into the bar. Don't make the bend too tight or come back to haunt you. The chamfer of the bar, created by the chisel cut, needs to be removed. Work across the corners and slowly rotate the bar to square, just as you would to correct a rhombus shaped taper. Once the bar is square, go to the bick to finish drawing it down. Finish at the face by dressing the edges and the corners, so you get a nice smooth look. Place the hook material into the hardy hole as you slowly open the bend. Working at the soft edge of the anvil as we made our initial set downs allows us to draw down the chamfer on the spike material without worrying about cold shuts. Draw down the spike material at the bick and then go back to the face of the anvil for dressing the edges and corners. I have three sharp corners on my version of the miner's candlestick. There are various ways to create a sharp outside corner of a bend. I'm going to use the draw away method, isolating the extra material needed in the bend for the corner in my version of the miner's candlestick. With the hook pointing to the bick, lay off approximately one inch from the edge of the anvil to the nearest side of the hook. Set the material down to about 5 sixteenths of an inch or so. Take another heat and then crowding that corner on the opposite side of the anvil, so we're now working on the offside edge, set the material down again, leaving a peak of material that will later become the outside of our corner bend. As we already have heat in the bar, I'm going to draw down what I can of the eye for the candlestick. Take the bar down to a fat quarter inch square. Take a heat at the 9.5 inch mark and sever the candlestick from the remainder of the bar.
We're now going to set the bar down at the 7.5 inch mark. Notice how working over the bick or the horn earlier negates the problem of cold shuts forming now as we work. Do not correct for the growth in width. Once you've isolated the material, draw that flag down to about half inch, five eighths or so by quarter inch thick. This flag material is going to become the candle holder later on. I'm going to defi define the candle holder by creating a shoulder at the base of the flag on the soft near side edge of the anvil. The shoulder is going to be on the same side of the bar as the corner peak that you made earlier. Slide the flag about half an inch onto the anvil and set down what will be one side of corner number 3. Corners 3 and 2 are very close to each other so hold the material at an angle to the anvil as you work. Place the corner that you've just made about an inch onto the face of the anvil and then set down for corner number two. You may need to use your cross pin to draw out the material in between the two corners. I have a, a one inch flat topped fuller that I use specifically for this move, although you probably don't have one so that's why I'm showing it at the edges of the anvil. Take a look at this next photograph so you can see my fuller in use. Once you've fully isolated the material for corner number two, draw down the material that will make the eye. You should have enough material for about six inches between peaks one and two. I like to place some decoration on the outside of the eye and I use a V block to help me get it there. With the peaks for the corners up, lay off about half an inch from the peak and then set the eye down into a V block for about two inches. My block is about two inches wide. Over a six inch strip, which you have, you can see you're going to be left with some unforged material. This will be at the back of the eye when finished. Check to make sure that the unforged material is between the two corners. I'm going to turn our attention to the candle holder. Flatten the candle holder with the flat face of your hammer until the length of the candle holder is about three and a quarter to three and a half inches long. Once you've reached the desired length, use the cross pin to spread the material. We want about an inch above the base. Everything below the base will be cut off later to make it lay flat on a table or such. I generally work from the baseline towards the top and I also want to pull some material into the corner nearest the eye. I'm going to pivot the material and use my cross pin to bring material into the corner, rather like using a pastry roller on a pie crust. Dress the forged material with the flat face of your hammer and then check for an equal spread. I want about one inch of material above the baseline. Make sure the candle holder material is parallel to the center line of the bar as you work. At this stage, I'm going to identify all the material below the baseline. Once I've got my chalk mark snapped, I'm going to go to the vise and use my hot cut chisel and just cut off the excess material. Hold the chisel at a slight angle so the chamfer on the bottom of the chisel is parallel to the top of the vise. The candle holder is comprised of two parts, the bit that will actually hold the candle and then a thumber to open up the cup so you can get the candle in place. The thumber is going to come to rest above the eye material and as such needs to have a section of the flag removed to allow it to fit. When I'm working out the length of material needed to actually hold the candle I must include the shoulder at the base of the flag. In this case that's about 3 16th of an inch tall. So I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch candle I'm going to add to that the thickness of the material, let's call it a sixteenth of an inch, and then I'm going to work out my circumference. Subtract from the circumference the extra three sixteenths for the shoulder, and that will give you the material that you'll need. Cut the corners off at 45 degrees, and remove all the stubborn material with a pair of scroll tongs. 
After filing the thumber and the candle cut material, bend the thumber away from the shoulder. Place the candle holder material over the offside edge of the anvil and use your cross pin to start rolling the eye. Don't finish the candle holder material at this stage because it's going to interfere when you make the corner number three. And you can see at this stage I've got corner three over the bick and I'm using the flat face of my hammer to bend that to not quite 90 degrees. Once I've got it somewhere near form, I'll use the flat face again just to dress up the corner to make it nice and crisp. You may need to cycle between the bick and the soft offside edge of the anvil to finish the corner. Once you've got the corner where you like it, we're going to finish the candle holder. I use a 7 8 of an inch half round bottom swage and a 3 quarter inch round bar to represent the candle. Start the bend with your cross pin, insert the mandrel and then close the rest of the eye around the mandrel and forge to suit. You can see the thumber coming over the top of the eye material as I work. Once you've got the candle holder roughed out, it's time to turn our attention to corner number two. Take a heat, quench out the candle holder and then bend corner number two over the bick. Take the bend to 130 degrees or so and then dress the corner. Give it a nice radius at the back, don't work on the tip of the bick too much. I'm not going to work here again so I'm going to give the a candle cup and the corner a good brush. To be fair to collectors I'm going to stamp my candle holder so that it's not confused with an antiquity. Turn the hook away from the peaks for the corners so it's going to the outside of the piece. Once you've got the hook where you like it, it's time to turn your attention to corner number one. Again, bend that to 130 degrees or so and sharpen up the corner. At this stage, you've finished your forging. We just need to bend the eye around a piece of pipe or over the bick to complete the miner's candlestick. You may need to tweak the eye a little bit with some scrolling wrenches, but you're as near down as you can be. I close the gap by squeezing it between the jaws of the vise. Then I reinsert my 3 quarter inch round bar into the candle holder and with a pair of bolt jaw tongs I tweak the candle holder until it's pointing in the right direction. Give the whole thing a bit of a brush and then wax it to suit. If you like this style of forging, check out my books at markasbury.com. I have three books available that will help you along your course of study to become a blacksmith. And if you're looking for a place to forge in North America, go to the abana.org website and check out the resources drop-down menu.